All right, new video series today and Snub Nose Revolvers, and we're testing the 327 Federal Magnum versus the 357 Magnum. The 327 Federal Magnum is a 85 grain jacketed hollow point hydroshock bullet, and the 357 Magnum I'm testing today is actually 158 grain. Uh, the low recoil variant of the 357 Magnum is a 130 grain, and I'm not actually testing that today because I tested it in the past, and its recoil wasn't any lower than the standard Hydroshock from what I could tell. Uh, energy was roughly the same, and the damage it did to the uh, ballistic pack was roughly the same. So since I got a lot of this ammunition, I am going to test the standard Hydroshock versus the 327 low recoil. And I don't believe the 327 comes in a standard Hydroshock that's not re low recoil. I think they did in the past, but they don't offer it currently. This 357 Magnum ammunition was donated by Tim B a few months ago with a whole bunch of other ammunition. And it's rated at 1240 feet per second out of a 4 inch barrel, 4 inch V as listed by Federal. I believe that means ported. And the 327 Magnum, also tested out of a 4 inch V barrel, is 1400 feet per second, but it is a much lighter bullet. And this 327 Magnum LCR was donated by Ken S uh, recently, so thank you very much for that, and thank you, Tim B, for the ammunition. So we're going to test 327 versus 357, and we're going to do our standard test. We're going to go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and energy and accuracy we're getting at the same time, and then we're going to go through the juggernaut box, which is four layers of denim followed by one and three quarter inches of bologna to simulate flesh, and then one quarter inch medium density fiberboard to kind of give resistance like uh, sternum and ribs and into water jugs to catch that projectile. So let's get started with the test with the 327 versus the 357 and the Hydroshock and see what kind of velocity and energy we're getting. And I'm also going to state felt recoil because I think there's going to be a huge difference in felt recoil. So let's get started with the test. All right, I'm going to start with the 357 Magnum. I'm actually going to go uh, single action on this because the uh, trigger pull is a little bit long on this. I'm not quite used to it yet. And it makes me uh, jerk the shots a little bit when I'm trying to go through the chronograph. But we're going to go single action, see what kind of velocity numbers we get with the 158 grain Hydroshock in the short barrel. 1176. 1194. 1160. 1133. And 11.65, accuracy is not that great, and it hurts. There's a lot of felt recoil there. Now let's see how the 327 Federal Magnum compares. I'm guessing we'll get a lot less felt recoil with that. All right, 327 Federal Magnum and the LCR. We'll see what kind of velocity we get. It's right out of a 4-inch barrel at 1,400. We'll see how close we get. 11.65. 1186 1130 1129 1127 uh, a lot easier to shoot a lot more accurate and almost no felt recoil I really couldn't tell a difference um, in felt recoil with this versus like a 38 special plus P to be honest Felt like a 38 Special Plus P to me. Uh, velocity is quite a bit below listed velocity, but still a good amount of energy. A little bit more than your average 38 Plus P. Now let's hit the ballistic box and see what kind of ballistic performance we get between the two. This should be very interesting. All right, I'm going to go with the 357 Magnum first, single action again. Uh, this is going to be probably pretty potent round here. Let's see what we get. I got wet. Wow, and I see the jacket in the first jug. That's pretty impressive. All right, here is the density fiber board. We put a good size hole through it. Perfect shot placement on the front here. And we just shredded this thing to nothing. That is some pretty impressive damage. Ugh. All right, first jug, we shredded it about as good as it's going to be shredded. I actually see pieces of other parts of the jacket, other parts of the lead in here, fragmentation, um, more pieces of jacket, uh, jug two, we have pieces of something in there, yep, more pieces of lead in jug two, Go 
jog three. It looks like we went through jog three. I don't see any pieces in jog three. I see a jog a hole in jog four. And I can see a hole out the back of jug four, it then a jug five, and the core of the bullet is in the box here. And I'm gonna try to <laughs> display this the best I can. Uh, this is just uh, this is nasty here. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because we're gonna get more penetration when we slip off some of that uh, jacket and uh, flowering petals, and we left it behind. Um, all I can say is I really would not want to get hit with that. I would guess that would be more devastating than uh, a lot of traditional rounds. That's that's pretty nasty there. Um, but let's see how the 327 Federal compares. All right, 327 Federal Magnum. I don't feel like we're going to get as much damage, but uh, we'll see what we get. At least the recoil won't be so bad. I got hit with a little piece of baloney. And the damage to the first jug looks uh, pretty on par with like 9 millimeter. And the baloney pack pretty on par with what I see with like 9 millimeter hollow points as well. Alright, the first jug has just a ton of debris. And I saw that with the uh, 32 h and Magnum, which I thought was a little bit strange. More debris in it than the 38 caliber bullets. And jug two, it looks like we went clean through. And the damage to jug one is definitely not as much as the 357. Jug three, I don't see any marks on the back of jug three or into jug four. There's a little bit of a dent out the back of jug three, actually. Uh, but nothing on jug four. We have the bullet and jug three. And here we are, a pretty good um, expansion. So the penetration we got was right on par with exactly what I want to see. I always say that between jug three and four, if we can dent out the back of jug three and maybe dent jug four, I've noticed that that's pretty much on par with about 15 inches of ballistics gel penetration and comparable testing. So I would say this is pretty much perfect. Low recoil, very low recoil, very accurate. Um, the damage is about like what a nine millimeter does and we got perfect penetration. Overall, I'd say it's a pretty good round, and it's a step above a 38 Special. That particular 357 Magnum, that's that's kind of a last resort round. It's something I really wouldn't want to fire in self-defense. Um, very loud, very very much a lot of recoil. Might be kind of hard to control a round like that. Even the low recoil version, when I tested that, a little bit hard to, to control. But this recoiled just like a 38 Special. All that being said, this particular 327 Federal Magnum is a little bit low on the power scale. I did a lot of research on it before I tested and it was really, really quite low. Um, and that's what we saw today, a lot lower uh, energy than what is capable out of a 327 Federal. However, the recoil is exactly what you want for a good self-defense cartridge. So is this the most powerful 327? By no means, no, uh, but very good ability to control that round and overall pretty good performance. I would say comparable to about a 9mm hollow point. So that's not bad at all. That's not bad. So that's what you get today with the Federal Hydroshock between the 357 Magnum and the 327 Federal Magnum. Huge difference. Huge difference overall, but both are pretty usable cartridge cartridges. I would rather carry the 327 personally. I'd rather have more control and, and so much power I can't control it. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.